Welcome back, everyone. Stories of the Week is brought to you by Anapsis, the leading provider of solutions to protect ERP systems from cyber attacks. Customers can secure their SAP and Oracle business critical platforms from espionage, sabotage, and financial fraud risks. Visit them on the web at anapsis.com. And by Pony Express. Check out the community edition and turn your Nexus 7 into a lean, mean, pen testing machine. For all those hard to reach places, there's Pony Express. Visit them on the web at ponyexpress.com. And we, of course, have not Kevin, who works at Pony Express. You're still in the office, Kevin. I'm still here. We're, uh, we're pretty much 24 7 here. Yeah, you're, you're just you're working all the time. That's awesome. Kevin, Non-stop. what? Stop. What, what have you been seeing out there for security news or things you want to talk about or stuff you're seeing in your, your kind of day in the life of Kevin at Pony Express? Oh, man. The, where do I even start? That's kind of a funny question. So, uh, I mean, if you guys remember me from when I was at least three and a half years old doing off the hook, I was much more of a policy and privacy person. Mm. So, from what I see at Pony Express, is a, I definitely follow a lot of kind of what's going on in the news when it comes to legislation and the impact on information security. And definitely the story of the week is um, the ACLU uh, successfully fighting the New York State judges for turning over records about stingrays. And I'm, I'm, this has been discussed many times on this show, and it's definitely a very popular topic. But I think this is the first time ever that a uh, sheriff's county in upstate New York is actually being forced to turn over their non-disclosure agreements with Harris Corporation about stingrays. Stingrays being IMSI catchers or what essentially fake cell towers, hmm. which is an incredibly interesting thing considering that this is a very brand new technology that's only got a lot of play within the whole information security recently when it comes to 3G, 4G interception. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I remember being at ShmooCon like years ago. Hearing about MC catchers and it's, in various conferences years ago, it, right? It's nothing new, and it's been no. fairly trivial up until when they introduced LTE. And now that there is kind of a whole, you know, market for doing this kind of stuff, they really kind of black box this. The GSM was broken 10, 15 yeah, years yeah. ago. GSM C- was a low hanging fruit. And uh, CDMA is still pretty tricky, uh, just because of mm-hmm. the the actual encryption used, but. Uh, now that we, there's a commercialized product for doing this entire thing, and we've seen it's widespread adaption, the, the privacy implications is, is huge. So this is going to be a very interesting court case to follow with the ACLU and the EFF and uh, what's actually going to be released publicly. And as we've seen uh, numerous organizations, especially within the law enforcement and Fed, try to fight this. But now there are still FCC regulations that prevent to get this sort of, of activity, right? Like in Pony True. Express products, we can't oh, yeah, just no, 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 up people's the, cell phone calls, right? I, I am yeah. not talking about Pony Express at yeah. all here. This is more of the uh, just things that I follow. Mm. Uh, from a Pony Express standpoint, man, um, uh, what I see on a daily, daily basis is wireless. Really hard challenge to solve still. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and you yeah, know what? You, you exactly speak to that. You know, we've seen, uh, for me, I've seen attendance drop off on the SANS wireless course, which is the one that I primarily teach. And we go into organizations, you know, week after week, and it's like, no, you guys, you guys haven't solved this wireless problem. In fact, this is still really bad. You really need some education around some of this, some, some of this type of stuff. And I don't, I, I think people aren't going to get some of this training because they think they figured it out. And no, so HP's no, uh, no acquisition of Aruba probably didn't help Ooh, this week. Did no. Yeah. Uh, speaking no. Of, of vendors and none in particular, Ooh. one thing I've noticed since, since I work in, in downtown Boston and uh, a part of my commute home takes me through a large portion of downtown Boston, I just do a little bit of war walking every once in a while. The amount of uh, uh, what we call enterprise-grade AP gear, if you will, if, if that's a term for it, that's fluctuating between open networks one day and then being private the next day, I mean, i.e. misconfigured, incredibly mm. bad, or serving ad hoc, or defaulting back to an open wireless connection. Mm-hmm. Or ones it's, with really poor PSKs, or... It's, uh, the amount of Web40 encryption that I see on my daily walk home <sighs> is bad. It's wow. incredibly bad, especially considering where I've seen these and the actual locations of that, that host. It's these like APs. configuration management for wireless is important. Like no, defaulting no. back to that insecure yeah. configuration happens. No. Yeah, it's not it's important. important. It's probably not. Important. not no, don't worry about it. It's, it's still an incredibly hard challenge. Uh, that I, hmm. 
any organization, you could be the, the, the small mom and pop up to your, your Fortune 10 company. When you start scaling that out and looking at that gear, it's really about how you deploy it. And the first time you touch that piece of hardware, if you don't have the right resource configuring it, you're opening yourself up to so many problems going down the road. Well, you know, it's interesting you say that, Kevin, because uh, according to Dark Reading Room, most companies expect to be hacked in the next 12 months. Imagine that. No. Duh. Well, no. considering that the, the, the Verizon report puts you at 241 days until realizing a breach. So the next 12 months means they're actually going to realize it, what, 10 years down the road maybe? <laughs> wow. <laughs> More than 70% of organizations say they've suffered a successful cyber attack, and 22% of them have hit six or more times. Wow. This is breaking this is breaking news. Yes. It's, is that mainstream media? Is, uh, media? <laughs> no, oh, this sorry. is darkreadingroom.com. Oh, okay. Yeah. To be honest, I don't feel you know, I, I don't see it as something like, hey, that's new. Oh, that's surprising. No. <laughs> Given what we know from pen testing and us not having sometimes the budget to get the really cool tools or don't have the time to code the really cool tools, and these guys do, I don't find it surprising that mm -hmm. there, so many people are going to pop in now, and Carlos, pop so quickly. Carlos, Good do you way. find it surprising that there are more SSL vulnerabilities today than there were a couple of days ago? Yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> wow. To be honest... Bus. <sighs> in, in, in great part, I don't like Snowden, and in other parts I admire the guy, and in other parts I go like, eh. And I blame him for everything on open cell because for some reason, this shitty code, nobody was looking at it. Um, after he made all of that stuff public, now people are starting to look at it. It's kind of like... Uh, it, it's kind of the perfect example when people say, no, stuff is open source. It has many eyes, so it's more secure. <laughs> they go like, look at fucking open SSL. And, and that's kind of my example on it. Well, open SSL started kind of hyping, like, oh, we have a CVSS score of 10. This is a big vulnerability. Oh, we're going to uh, release it um, on this day from this hour to this hour. And everybody kind of got their panties in a bunch. Everybody was emailing everybody. There was Twitter. There was uh, articles. And everybody was kind of predicting. If they're kind of giving us several days, it means that this is a heart bleed. Or worse than heart bleed. Or uh, worse than freak. And everybody was kind of scrambling. In fact, I was scrambling at work. In, in fact, I uh, just tried uh, um, I spent most of my day with my team kind of setting up all kinds of different types of SSL stacks, so when we test our stuff, we make sure that it only triggers on OpenSSL, only on the vulnerable version, so we had to set up a bunch of VMs ahead of time. We set them up, we tested those, we scanned them, rescanned them, we checked configurations, we did alternate configurations. We spent quite a, a bunch of time on all of this kind of prepping because we, we kind of fell for the hype, like, hey, if they're doing this ahead of time means that it's going to be very big. Well, it, it, it was kind of big. It was actually, uh, I think, 11 vulnerabilities in total. Um, I've only been focusing on one specific one, um, which is the uh, highest one, which is CV 2015-0291, which is a denial of service one. Um, it's kind of a cool one. Um, when we look at it, it it's, it's one of the things that actually reminds me why I hate C and so much and C++ code because you have to kind of be looking at so many stuff. Uh, basically, uh, what happens is in the first handshake uh, from a client, um, the structure for validating everything gets set to a specific length. Then when you renegotiate and everything is set to null, that length is less uh, left like it is. Uh, so later when code kind of reuses that um, and walks through that structure, uh, it's not checking for null. Uh, so what's actually happening is that you can actually crash that box. You're actually performing a denial of service. 
uh, sexually happening only for TLS 1.2, um, we're, we're able to kind of crash boxes at will if they have TLS 1.2 where you can go in, hey, put, look, look at this bug at, at this server. Let's run against it. Boom. Oh, server goes down. Um, and it's kind of interesting, but uh, what I find even more that makes me sadder or more pissed off. <laughs> is that picture is I just sent you? <laughs> no, no, no. It, it was that, uh, ra- um, there was this researcher called David Ramos that found this bug. He reported it over to the SSL group in 2011, and it's been patched today. Oh, God. So this is the big Uber bo- uh, bug. It, it's, 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 it's not, not like four days. In May though. of 2014. That was a thousand days. <sighs> it's really disheartening as we, we talk with Pablos about how he said security, security sucks. I went on to solving easier problems like malaria and nuclear waste and global warming. Global warming, yeah. yeah. And, and here we have the open SSL bugs that continue to persist. And it's like, how do we fix those? Do we, do we stop using SSL? Do we switch to a new... Open SSL or SSL stack, rather. What do we well, do about from it? From the Libra team, Libra, Libra team went over all of their all the Open SSL code, forked it over, and started kind of fixing it. And when you look at the Open SSL, um, how it has been coded, it doesn't follow any guidelines. We just add code and add more code. Oh, mm-hmm. now let's make it compile for our calculator. Let's make it compile for Tendem. Let's. In fact, they recently removed Tendem support. Uh, um, actually, they even pushed a patch recently uh, to have compile on Open VMS and uh, on all of this bunch of systems. So you have this big hodgepodge of code that is supposed to work everywhere, compile everywhere, and you add to, the, to it an RFC that is so freaking complicated with so many uh, several RFCs, with so many moving parts, with so many different standards. And everybody implements it like they feel it should be. So that's when you have several SSL stacks that don't handle stuff the same way. Um, but when we look at this, we have uh, a bunch of bugs. Most of them are segmentation faults, memory corruption. Uh, yes, it's not remote code execution. It's not sexy. But still patch. It means um, somebody who really, really hates you uh, can get their hands on a proof of concept code and just go within nearly kind of taking down your services. Because nowadays, so much freaking stuff uses SSL. And so much stuff actually doesn't use it correctly. Um, but people kind of bolt it in and say, oh, let me bolt in SSL. It's secure now. Mm-hmm. It's encrypted. Are you checking certificates? No. Are you check, checking um, the certificate chain? No. It's that classic. Do you have enough to inc- for certificate pinning? Uh, no. It's that classic <laughs> encryption problem. Like encryption's great and on paper it's secure, but the devil's in the implementation. Yeah. Mm. And, and, oh, and, and, and there are people who actually take up as a self fork it and let me make some modifications for my app. <laughs> Gotta make it better, right? Let well, me make it better. And you asked the question, Paul. You know, is it? Do we do we do something better? Do we get rid of SSL? Yeah, what replaces it? But remember, the internet and the the way we transact business today mm-hmm. wouldn't exist without SSL, right? That's true. So, the only thing that allowed the internet to do what it does today for us is SSL. Is SSL, and if it is flawed, which obviously there are versions of it that are flawed, we have to continue to figure out how to fix it because. The stake of the internet is in the hands of SSL. Mm. It, it really is. It's, it's a, that's the most frightening so thing much. you've said to me, I think, ever. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> fact, it's not SSL itself. It's the implementations of SSL. Uh, uh, yeah. Understood. But it, but it, and implement it. Because right now, everybody knows. If, if, if you go to any corporation and you're going to come out with a product that is going to be critical, um. You set up guidelines. This is our style guide. This is what how we're going to code. These are the libraries that we're going to use. This is our QA process. The problem is that with many, many, many open source projects out there, 
including OpenSSL as, as a great example, there's nothing like that. People, people just get into the team, they have made several commits, they haven't broken stuff, they seem to know what they know, what they're doing. Let's give them commit access and people just start committing code and committing code. And there's nobody actually going through that process of auditing that code, following a specific guideline, making sure that stuff is, is done in a secure manner. It's just that lack of structure out there. And then you have something as easy as OpenSSL, which is open source. Anybody can grab it. Anybody can use it. It's kind of like a, uh, sometimes uh, that happens to open source projects. They become like kind of like prostitutes. Everybody can just bang on it. And they just grab the project. They start working on it. Oh, I can use it now. Oh. Hey, let me give it to Paul. Paul can now use it now. Oh, that was great. It worked. No, awesome. no, 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 no. Wait, it. I want to go first. Can I go first? <laughs> I'm not picky. I travel a lot. I'll bang on it. <laughs> As I sit here watching TBT, <laughs> things that bounce Thursdays. <laughs> Sorry, Carlos. No, that, that's why I throw out the joke because it's just... just so sometimes people just go, it's open source, it's been used by Linux, it should be secure, people should have been looking at it, oh, it's crypto, it should be done by somebody who actually knows crypto if everybody's kind of using it, let's use it ourselves. Uh, but it doesn't work. Nobody understands crypto anymore. Yeah, we, we made it so easy, true. right? Mm. We made it so easy. We give them an open source library, they... Implement it, it, implement yeah, it with yeah, its default it. settings, right, right. and they think it's done, but mm -hmm. they don't understand crypto, right, under mm -hmm. the covers. And and now look what what we've got in the industry. So it's, it's recently I went to the University of Puerto Rico. There was this uh, good friend of mine. I kind of feel bad throwing him out to the wolf, but he was giving a presentation. He's a great Python guy. And he was talking. He said, oh, we'll encrypt this with Base64. And I actually spilt my water. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, I wanted to kind of put my hand up and, and go, like, you fucking moron. <laughs> and, and, and I kind of waited for a break and went to him and go, like, dude, Base64 is not encryption. It's encoding. And he goes, and goes like, oh, you security guys. And go like, okay, that's the attitude. Let me sit that back down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, and now let me get a new water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, well, let's talk about something that at least has some more hope about being secure, and that's <laughs> embedded devices. <laughs> no, <laughs> maybe. Sorry. Maybe not. Really? <laughs> You think? Uh, no, let's talk about social engineering. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> um, well, D Link let's is. Let's talk about it, WordPress. Yeah, let's talk about WordPress, <laughs> even. No, wait. Um, so, D Link Shit. is moving to patch a bunch of vulnerabilities in consumer products. Um, it looks like their network cameras now are vulnerable that allow attackers to upload arbitrary files and remotely execute arbitrary code. Which, this is come. I'm telling you, people, this is coming in an episode of CSI Cyber where they swap out the video feed of the web camera, or if you've watched any of these shows, right, the way they gather intelligence is they're like, let me hack into the video stream of these network cameras, or let me hack into the video stream of the cameras mm. in the area. And they're like, done. And I really think... Welcome to the future. Wait, no, welcome to Tuesday. No. I, re <laughs> I really think that's reality. Like, I really yep. think it's that easy. It, it, that's, that's what, what CSI, CSI Miami is. Yeah. Is that the one? Oh, Scandal. Scandal does that oh, all the time. Yeah, no, it's yeah, one, of the, the one of the CSI ones with LL Cool J on it. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it's seriously. It's Miami. It's whichever one that one is. Whatever. But, I yeah. think it's New York, but maybe. No, it's one of the CSIs with LL, LL Cool J. is East Coast, though. And, uh, Just saying. But uh, they they do they do the thing and it's like oh yeah we'll go into SecNav and we'll go in pull up all the video cameras from yeah. the, all like the traffic instant. cameras I'm like I got all the video cameras yep. yeah uh, Larry like can you that? stop ruining the episode for me I sorry I'm um, um, sorry yeah. no. okay. <laughs> sorry about that. I mean, I'm done so, I can't watch it anymore yeah. Yeah. it's over but, hey but, but Kevin let me lead you into something <laughs> they hack into the security cameras I, I no. just ruined like every well, Scott, well, well so, so, so Kevin now you Bond, can go right? watch so, now you can go watch that other show that's Scorpion Scorpion so wait do they get past the firewall with dual keyboard hacking. 
Just, so, just, no, we don't want to place. give it away. We don't want to give it away. Ah, I just the best damn. thing that the best thing on CSI Cyber was the uh, the <laughs> spoiler the, alert. No, the error in your multi view code. It was the, the the vulnerabilities in your multi view code. They were talking about baby monitors. Wow. It was the, the mm. vulnerabilities in your multi-view code. I like mu- yeah, vulnerabilities. Yeah. Make sure you put out secure multi-view so code. So does that mean my <laughs> Lorax or my Swan home yeah, systems are something. completely toast? Yes. Completely toast. toast. Completely okay. toast. Mm. Well, no, I'll, 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 I'll buy something. Aside, you know what I'm finding kind of scary is that hacking has become a lot easier. O-days have become a lot easier to get their uh, people get their hands on. I have friends that actually... Make quite a good living selling O days to yeah. government and yep. to other uh, entities, and um, it's getting to that point where it, where the movie and the fiction it's kind of getting expecting. close to reality. Close to reality, reality right? Because yep. yeah. there's have so much more technology. Can Carlos. actually go plug in a cable to a, a, a let's say an Android device. The Android device is rooted, boop, loader and lock. Boop, boop, okay. I got my back door in in five minutes or three minutes. Yep. In the movies, you see it in one second, two seconds. In real life, you can get it in a couple of minutes. But we're getting there. It's getting to I, that point where it's... Yep. And, and yeah, but and, I, ha- and quite I honestly, have to think that it's easier than fabricating my own PLC with Bluetooth to hack the roller coaster. That's... I'm just throwing that out now, there. Now, I'm now, throwing that out now, there. Now, think think about this. So we have the regular CSI, the Vegas one, where yeah. they do all this stuff. And you think about it, and, like, they take this sample and they squirt it into the GC mass spectrometer. And, like, TV, they have, like, this thing, like, three or four seconds later, this report spits out of the printer. And, oh, yeah, it was mercury. It, it, yeah, but it, this but is you know, the same show where but, a character... But, no, but wait, but... And it, it, but it works like that, but it's it's it it's an oversimplified version yeah. of how that works. Now, my my it takes wife a little longer, my, my my wife is an analytical analytical chemist, and she said that's exactly what she used to do. She used to work on right. a GC mass spec, and she says, yeah, it works like that, but it takes like two days. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And that's There's not no exciting. Exactly. TV, I, I so you gotta to shrink things. everything yeah. into yeah. shrink everything. Uh, shooting yeah. sequences. But, but the minutes, thing is, exactly. they kill people off on these same shows because oh well, he didn't clean his gun, so we can just shoot a scene where he dies. I'm like, really, really, really. I mean, maybe, but it, really, it's writing. It's really, yeah. Come on, it, it's writing. It, it's yeah. it's based in reality, but it's not. Exactly. It's just, it's just a little sped up. Yes, it's it's sped up, and there has some up. been some certain liberties taken to make the average human. Carlos, how long would you have to not clean your handgun before you could definitively attribute it to not firing? Depends on the brand and depend how you got it. Depends on the ammo. Springfield too. XD, six hours. Uh, Springfield yeah. XD, if uh, and and Glocks, I've seen people that think that uh, WD forty will fix everything. Oh or, yeah, that's uh, bad. Or, really? Or, or, yeah. or, I wouldn't or put WD forty they, they, they on my just, Springfield to save my life. Are you no, kidding me? Come on. If, if you grab if you grab a Springfield XD or a Glock, uh, any strike to fire pistol, and you put a bunch of oil that goes into the striker. And you shoot it several times, and you keep putting oil. That striker canal is going to get filled mm-hmm. with crud that is going to then solidify. And then when you try to shoot it, you're going to get a, uh, a light primer strike that is not going to fire that bullet, and you're going to have problems. Right? Yeah, misfire. Extraneous yeah. circumstances, and, 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 though. And I, 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 so Carlos, and, Carlos, and, just for record's mm-hmm. sake, I own a Springfield XD 45 ACP. Mm-hmm. I, I clean it every time. I, I do oil it because you got to oil the spring yeah. mechanism, not with but WD-40. I, I clean it. Yeah. Yeah. No, God, no, not right. not with WD forty. <laughs> Absolutely not. I have WD forty in the garage, but that's and that's, 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 the, that's my the garage. Like kids' bike chain or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. But they can obviously get corroded. You have to right. clean them, but. The question is, how many rounds do you have to fire? Fire before, before it. it gets to that exactly. point. Exactly. Right. It's the same with any 1911 oh, well, in my six I, hours. I, did, right, I saw a case at, at the range of a police officer who worked uh, close to the beach. He had a Glock, very nice weapon, um, and he worked close to the beach. And he says, no, it's a Glock. I don't need it to clean it that much. I shoot it, and from time to time, I'll clean it. And he goes into the lane right beside me. He loads his mag. And he only gets one shot off, hmm. and then he start. I, I can start seeing tap and ragging, tap and ragging, and he was having problems. What happened was that the extractor is not 
coded or created with Tefnir like the slide mm -hmm. and him working close to the beach and all of that salt and everything corroded, uh, corroded the, um, the, the extractor and the extractor broke yep. and fire one round extractor didn't pull the case double feed pull, pull yep. magazine out pull, pull it, uh, the rest out put it back in at the mag rack it double feed fire boop, double feed again yep. and, and it, we didn't notice until we completely disassembled the gun and we looked very closely at the um, extractor, and we saw that its tooth was broken in the inside. Hmm. Hmm. Like, oh, and then we can see the rust in between the slide, and, and it, it can happen. As uh, cheesy I, as it sounds, it, yeah. it's almost like security hygiene, right? Like, you got to keep up with that kind of stuff. You got to keep up. Right. Mm -hmm. you Every gotta, time I yeah, take my guns cheesy, to the range, I know. It, you, no, and, and, and all and, my and kids. It's like security. If you don't train, if you give anybody a gun and you don't give them training, training. and they don't yeah. train in a, in a constant manner, at least dry fire twice twice a, a week and then go to the range. And yeah. for every 15 rounds, that if 50 dry fire snaps that you do, you at least shoot one round in the range. And when the chips are down, you won't perform. It's mm. the same thing yep. with security. If you don't train and if you don't practice and if you don't simulate different scenarios – you won't be able to it's perform. It's like putting your right. IPS in blocking mode right away. If you don't test it first. Right. That's right. Like right. <laughs> and I tell my wife, <laughs> you've got the, you, you've got the you gun got range membership. you got to go shoot gotta 50 rounds it. a week. you got to go. No, it's true. It's you got to go. It's, it's the reaction. It's the training. It's the, it's the rhythm. And it's taking the thing home, disassembling it, cleaning mm -hmm. it up, making sure it's ready to go for the next yep. time. It's the same reason why I like to maintain our own servers, right? I mm -hmm. like to mm -hmm. I got to I got to be in the disassembly of the gun and cleaning <coughs> it to yep. recommend people how they should should do it themselves, you know what yep. I mean? That's, yeah. like, that, that's exactly the same it's that's the same thing maintaining that I go next week. tables rules or you know, your own DNS servers. Or your SSL you. certificates. Or, yeah. or the other option is just to put the Remington 870 shotgun <laughs> with double buck <laughs> shot in, in, the, in the closet, and then you don't have to worry about no. it not firing. No, so. no, 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 dude. Buckshot, buckshot, slug. Buckshot, buckshot, slug. Uh, buckshot, buckshot, slug. Double buck shot. Well, just buck, just just double buck shot. But my so life that, can hit anything with double buck. Well, shot. exactly. That's the point. You can hit anything with double buck <laughs> shot, and then when they get close enough, you have that third shot of slug to put right in their head. <laughs> Dude, don't get me started. started. The double don't buck get me shot. Started. There's no, no slug required. <laughs> don't get me. Anyway. Triple tap, man. Triple tap. <laughs> None mm -hmm. of this double crap. <laughs> <laughs> Just it, keep shooting until they go down. Exactly. Limber, so limber up cheap, and like limber up. No, limber That's up. important. Limbering up is uh, important. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, don't live in California uh, because your magazine's limited. That's right. <laughs> as, as, as Real Suarez, the guy who trained me quite a bit, is the guy that I took most of my training from. Wait, Daniel, said, did you say Daniel Suarez? Gabriel Suarez. Oh, Gabriel okay, Suarez. different. Uh, they're like brothers or something, right? Different brothers. Uh, one different. story, end of story. So at the end of the at the end of the uh, situation, there has to be only one story, not two. Hmm. One story. And yours. It's just one. It's yours. Self not defense, theirs. not theirs. Hey, do you know if you click on a porn video on Facebook, you might get malware? What? Just kind of throwing that out there. What? But I have there. a Mac. I'm That's invincible. So beautiful. <laughs> I don't have a Facebook account. So see, I'm there. You I'm, go. I'm resilient. But I, but I but I don't click on porn. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, uh, um, I don't have Facebook. I didn't say the other side. <laughs> but, but I do have Facebook, and I don't click on porn on pay, pay. It, it It's yeah. interesting. The malware I tricks you. half of that. It's really messed up when the malware is tricking you into clicking on fake Flash player updates. Like, the average user is somewhat knowledgeable that this Flash player thing exists and there's mm -hmm. updates to it, knowledgeable enough to know mm -hmm, how vulnerable mm -hmm. it is, to know that that might be a good thing. And that's kind of what they're preying upon. Like mm -hmm. how crappy has the, the Flash player become that the average user knows this might be a good thing, so I'm going to click on it. Adobe's done a better job. They have. They're, <laughs> not, <laughs> they're, they're, they're not as vulnerable as, as they used to be. We try not to trash right? them as much. I, I right. think they've done a... Pretty good job over the past couple of years, but as yes. compared to what exactly? Open SSL. Drops mic. Drops mic. Walks away. <laughs> oh shit. Oh boy. Or Java. 
Java. I said oh, Java. He did. He yeah. did say Java. I did say Java. He yep. blushed open probably. us all at the same time. Well, Java. Well, what I hate about Java is that Oracle has this policy of, yes, we are release patches every six freaking months. And then you're an admin. You're chilling out. Six months later, you're going like, damn, I have 87 <laughs> different products that need patching and... I don't know how many of you have actually patched Oracle, but Oracle, sometimes you can actually force a patch on a server for components that you don't have. So many times the process for patching Oracle or DFS is to actually full backup, patch, patch. Ooh, doesn't work. Full restore. Let's mm -hmm. start again. Patch. <laughs> uh, and hey, I Carlos, just for the record, none of us use Oracle around here. We um, try to use some of the new technologies around databases and stay away from Oracle. So you use SQLite? No. No. SQLite. <laughs> SQLite all the way. <laughs> SQLite 3. Yeah, and, Car do, and Carlos, do, you, know what, you know what my favorite one is? Is that when you do uh, Oracle uh, uh, updates, you have to pick a methodology, whether you be do uh, CPUs or PSUs. So you have to do the individual packs, packs or you have to do the roll-ups, and you can't go between the two. And if you do one, You're stuck. your vulnerability yeah. assessment tools maybe finds that the other set hasn't been installed and then complains about it for thousands of individual items. Like if you install a CPU, it doesn't register that PSUs have been installed and vulnerability management tools say, hey, if you, especially if you're doing credentialed, um, say, hey, you haven't installed all those PSUs. Well, I can't because I went the CPU route. Yeah. Oh, Classic that. mistake. Love that. <laughs> love that. That's why we avoid Oracle at all costs. <laughs> yes. Avoid Oracle. Yeah, sadly, I have customers that live in Oracle. And, uh, no, we need Java 1.5 for this system that <gasps> oh, HR God. uses. And we use Java uh, 1.6 for this other. Well, you know that they're at Java 8, right? <laughs> oh, not cool. Kevin is having a heyday out there <laughs> in Boston. Yes. He is. Hey, I'm like one step Kevin. away from a heart attack. Right. And, and so not Kevin, you better get home before the snow hits again tomorrow. So Oh uh, no, don't don't tell me that. Oh my so god. Please just the the just MBTA sure. red line just started working again. I know, it's unbelievable. It's, it's like no, no, tomorrow. No, I'm out. I'm done. Tomorrow. I give up. Just get home. I'm never coming back. That's the thing. What's interesting for Kevin, for really for all of us, uh, I found another article. And the title was The End of the Pen Test as We Know It. And what's interesting. <laughs> because clearly IDS is dead. For the pen, <laughs> we interviewed Richard who, who, said the pen, who said that the IDS was dead. We actually had yes. him on the show. Yeah. Oh, really? We, we, cleared, we cleared the air. Yeah, it's it totally cool. The, it, what's interesting about the IDS being dead, Larry, is I, I think he was right. Actually, I think he was a little ahead of his time. So Cisco bought SourceFire <laughs> a little for ahead a of his time. shitload of money for an end of life product. But I think it's more. But I think it's more IP, IPS rather than IDS. I don't know. Right. I think. I, don't know. I didn't hear that one. There, so there, it, there are still people our gener our security generation that putting an IPS in blocking mode is. An IDS and mm. that's bad. IPS is bad because it breaks stuff. So that's an IDS. Because they don't get training it's and not, don't. It's not you have to go IDS back and listen to the interview with 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 Richard because I it's, should. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's actually really good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one of the, I'm kind of at peace with it. <laughs> well, you know. so one of the stories, you know, I told Paul earlier today is I did a lot of the QA testing for Tipping Point before they went GA, and you know, um, McAfee had just bought. Um, uh, who was it? Um, oh, yeah. Who did the, they buy? The IDS vendor, the IPS vendor, right? Now, we're, I remember comparing the two products side by side and back in the day. And I loved the the concept of IPS, but nobody ever used it. No. It's unfortunate. That's changed, though, today. A little bit, but still they, not They've gained the a lot extent. more ground. Yeah. They've gained a lot more ground. Anyway. But now the the pen test being at the end of it, for the past ten years we've always read articles about how well pen testing is dead right and all these people declaring things are dead and here's another article you know that's essentially saying that the, the gist of it is that we're all so vulnerable and we've got all this mobility mm -hmm. that we've got all these vulnerabilities so like why bother doing a pen test because you should assume that you're going to be owned in the next twelve months yeah. 
So well, Metasploit's not liking this article very much right about now? No. Probably no not. no pen testers are really liking this article right about now. Um, uh, I, sorry, Larry. Yeah, yeah it's, no, it's cool. Guys, yeah, you have value. It, I value you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Just, I, just I, can do more, I can do more than pen tests. <laughs> I'm multi-talented. I can dance. Make drinks. <laughs> drinks I definitely have seen, and um, I enjoy them. Um, However, I, I, I would I get, like to see your dancing skills. Um, I'm, I'm, an under, I'm an underwear model. Um, oh. Under, well. it, uh, amateur. Amateur underwear model. I, I don't know. <laughs> I want the author of that article to define pen testing. They don't. Kevin, yeah. it's a great point. They don't, they don't define what it is. Uh, one of the things that it is saying here is that, you know, we need to focus on points where communication leaves the network in the expanded scope of penetration testing to include the possibility that compromised devices are connected to the network. Uh, uh, at the end of the day, I don't even know what that means. I actually, I, you, you. you know what I think that really means? It's called phishing. Well, uh, yeah, so... Right. We've got cloud, and we've got mobile, and all these different things that are expanding the IT universe. Mm -hmm. So, Larry, what's what's some of the like tried and true methods of breaking into an organization, right? The human. Uh, yeah, the, the human, human. Absolutely. The default or weak password, the missing third-party client patching software, the, the, you know, Kevin, in your case, right, the open wireless network that just uh, magically appeared, right? It's so helpful. It's, it's so helpful to, to us when we do penetration tests, right? And, and, that, and that's and that's either all done by a human, or a human has done something stupid by clicking on some link in email saying that their UP, their UPS package was going to be delayed or needed a signature. But it's not even the I mean, the human is one aspect of that, Larry, right? But it, I've always thought that pen testing goes much deeper than that, right? Like, yeah. okay, I gain a foothold into one of your clients. I really shouldn't be able to own the entire organization from that One point. Client. Or if I do, to go back to our previous conversation, Matt, someone should detect me right. doing that, right? Like, there should be red flags. Mm -hmm. Hey, why did that account log in over there? Or why is there a new why domain is, admin account? Right. Why is all our intellectual property just leave the network? Why did he no, access the system fact, he's never um, accessed before? Exactly. Yep. Recently, I, I got a chance to go to Redmond and, and talk with several of the Microsoft people last year. And I had a sit down with the uh, Assure pen testing team, the red team. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, I love the way that they work stuff over there. The way they work is the red team goes in, they do their stuff, they try to hack into everything, they write their own custom tools, they, they, they even develop their own exploits, their own command and control. And then they sit down and they do an open kimono type deal with the uh, blue team. This is how we own you. This is how we got in. We use this tool here. Our tool works this way. Blue team comes in. They learn from what the red team did. They secure their stuff. Cycle repeats. Red team needs to adapt. Blue team needs to now adapt again. And they keep going through it. And Several of, of the stuff that they actually do is blue team goes like, we detected you here, and they go like, no, you should have detected me over here while I was doing this stuff. And they keep improving and challenging each other, and at the same time improving the security where red team and blue team are not looking at each other as ad adversaries or in an adversarial way, but they're looking at each other as partners working mm -hmm. to secure the environment. Process, baby, process. Absolutely. <clears throat> um, I had a comment on, on Carlos's statement and I can't think of it now. Sorry. I did too, and you know what? It's it's it's, it's, awesome. it's the it's, old fashioned. It's, you know what? It's been sidecar and old fashioned. <laughs> my, ah. my thoughts on Carlos. It's, it's also been old fashioned and bees knees. <laughs> yes, old fashioned bees knees and sidecar. In any case, we got a hey. question where people can win a free hack naked T-shirt. Chris. Is also sidecarred and bees need an old fashioned, <laughs> and he can't come up with a question either, other than um, is what he tells me. Um, 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 um. okay. What color are my boxers? So, <laughs> thanks, Pink. Chris. That's <laughs> pinky pansy. Wow. Um, that was Aaron's I'll make it. Suggestion. I'm gonna make. <laughs> 
I know, make, I know their Lucky Brand. That's all I know. I'm going to make it easy this week. What company did Mr. Matt Alderman and Seth Geftick... Make sure I say his last name right. Geftick, right? I said that right. Mm-hmm. What company did Matt Alderman and Seth Geftick work together at? Email that answer to that question to psw at securityweekly.com, and we will send you a free Hack Naked t-shirt. Indicate your size um, and the style that you would like uh, in the Hack Naked shirt. We've got several different sizes and styles. And your mailing address as well. Well, if you win, you're going to need to indicate which shirt you want in your mailing address. But email the answer to the question, what company did Matt Alderman and Seth Geftick work at? Um... Email that to psw at securityweekly.com. The first person to – are we doing the first person? We're going to pick a winner. What do you think, Chris? We're going to pick a winner. We're going to pick a winner at random and send you a free Hack Naked t-shirt. So with that, we're going to take a short break, come back, and wrap up the show. So in 10 seconds, we'll be back. I want to thank our, all of our special guests for this evening. It's very, uh, it was an epic show. We had three interviews and stories to do for this show, and we pulled it off thanks to the fabulous production staff and all the people, uh, Pablo, Seth, and Matt Alderman, who was kind enough to join us in studio, uh, come for his, uh, in between his travels. My worldly travels. Yeah, your worldly yeah. travels. Matt is interesting. Matt is here. Uh, after visiting Baltimore, where the Tenable headquarters is, uh, and I always extend people who are visiting the Tenable office. I'm like, yeah, hey, come by the studio. Um, so it's great you've seen Jeff Mann here, and hopefully others from Tenable that will will come visit. And then Matt's off to like Tokyo and Singapore and Australia. He's on a worldwide tour after this, which is awesome. So yeah, uh, a little crazy. Yeah, thanks to our remote guest, Mr. Not Kevin, who joined us from Boston. We're gonna get ready for the snow, which is coming. It's Hopefully it's way, the baby. last one, dude. Uh, I know. Please, please stop telling me about it. Um, oh, it's just awful. And then we've got Carlos in sunny Puerto Rico who never gets snow, nope. and we're we're very jealous of that, Carlos. <laughs> in yes. fact, I actually feel bad. I had to turn off my AC because it was getting too cold. <laughs> 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 like, Carlos never talk to me again. That's <laughs> all I can say. Is Carlos lies. You, you don't Larry, feel bad about Larry, it. Larry, you made copious amounts of that bee's knees drink, which was great. What was that? It was gin and... Two ounces gin, one ounce uh, honey syrup, which is 50% syrup, 50% or 50% water, 50%, 50% honey, syrup. Yep. Oh, okay. and, yeah, and then uh, three quarters ounce of uh, lemon juice. Lemon. That, oh, yeah, that was With a little strows on top, right? We didn't do the strows on oh, that Oh, you didn't do no, the strows, yeah. Okay. yeah. Not in the bee's knees. No. That was the... Nice. That was the, uh, the my old, take on the old-fashioned. The oh, old-fashioned, right. yeah. Put yeah. a splash of rum in, which is was Jack's suggestion. So, <laughs> well, thanks everyone for watching, and we'll see you next week on Security Weekly. Good night, everyone. Larry, take us out. Over and out. <laughs> Peace to the brother.